That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Most Wanted, which will be available to stream on digital demand July 24th, 2020, courtesy of Sabin Films. It is the fifth film from French-Canadian director Daniel Roby uh, and stars Josh Hartnett. Do you know Daniel's other works? Uh, no. Uh, he had a, a post-apocalyptic... Post Blah, blah, blah. A post-apocalyptic film. Uh, What's the name of that drag race queen? Who? Uh, La, what was her name? LaShawn Beyond. LaShawn Beyond. Apocalypse, yeah. yeah. Uh, called a, a Breath Away, which starred Roman Dury and Olga Kirilenko, uh, which, uh, yeah, I, I would watch that film. It sounds good. Most Wanted is based on true events. Inspired by. Inspired by. Mm -hmm. um, a, it's about a Canadian man who uh, is imprisoned in Thailand over false claims that the Canadian federal government made against him. Correct. To kind of like punch up their investigation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you want me to try to tell the story? <laughs> um, we find Josh Hartnett as a reporter, like an investigative journalist. Yes, for 15 years. He's interviewing some uh, head of some department and accusing him, like, under his watch, like, some young men were, um, I think, injured or mistreated. The person walks off. I think it's to establish that jo Josh Hartnett's character is, like, this no-nonsense, like... He's, he's committed. He's, he's committed to the craft of journalism. Classical federal... Ju fe uh, investigative journalist. Then we find this young man played by uh, Antoine Olivier Pilon, who yeah. was the star of uh, Xavier Dolan's Mommy in 2014. He plays a character named uh, Danielle Leger. Danielle Leger. So we find Danielle working like in a field. He gets his paycheck. Uh, he goes for a ride into the city. He stops to get gas, and we hear him calling his mom. It's to establish that he has had issues in the past with drugs mm -hmm. because he's asking her for money and saying, I'm not going to use it to buy dope because he doesn't have any cash. He just has a paycheck. He ends up stealing gas, going into the city. He gets, he gets, he's looking for a friend. Mm -hmm. who, who he finds. Who he finds who's staying on a houseboat owned by Jim Gaffigan, mm -hmm. who's playing like a local drug. Named Picker. Drug lord, bicker, like a small time drug yeah. lord. Uh, he finds work with J Picker, who basically is like, he uses him as a, like drug mule kind of. Uh, yeah. He, so Picker is in cahoots with the government, law enforcement. They're trying to like the whole war on drugs. They're trying to crack down on people. So he's in cahoots with them. So he's just trying to find um, someone so they can arrest them for like drug transporting. Yeah, right. They're they're basically looking for a kind of a fake scapegoat, really. Yeah. Uh, which are uh, the, the law enforcement Stephen McCaddy and Mark Camacho. And the one I know from Come to Daddy. And uh, Pontypool. Oh, that's right. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, looking like hell, but yeah. He, he looks he, like he, hell. He did fit the part. Poor. He, he thought Mark Camacho was Paul Giamatti. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Uh -huh. Poor Daniel. Uh, his name is Daniel? Mm -hmm. Poor Daniel. He He's just like a junkie. The film doesn't show him being a full-on junkie, because this junkie has very nice skin and nice body, and we only see him using drugs a few times, but it's more like he's just partying with this girl. He's yeah. not like freebasing in an alley, like covered in feces. But anyway, this poor kid is just a junkie, but he gets wrapped up in this scheme. And the bulk of the film is law enforcement and the Jim Gaffigan character trying to convince him to go to Thailand to purchase drugs to transport back to Canada so they can make this big arrest. Wh where Which they want to arrest him uh, at the Vancouver airport. Yeah. But it's all for show. Yeah. At concurrently, because it's kind of done in flashback, because we see in the beginning Josh Hartnett's character interviewing Daniel, mm -hmm. and he's telling him his story, how he was basically set up, and then everything plays in rewind. Mm -hmm. So they convince him to go to Thailand. The crux of the issue is that law enforcement pays for him to go to Thailand, mm -hmm. like pay for, pays for his entire trip, which is illegal. Um, 
Once he gets there, they basically set him up to purchase drugs and then attempt to arrest him. During the arrest, in the real story, the, the, the movie sort of embellishes it, but uh, Stephen McCaddy, mm -hmm. his son, his character's son is like a cadet who's part of this mission. His son ends up getting killed in the sort of uh, interaction. In the scuffle. In the scuffle. Daniel's arrested, mm -hmm. taken to this Thai court. Stephen McCaddy's character shows up and testifies that Daniel's has a criminal record that involves the sale of drugs, which mm -hmm. is not true. So at a point in the film, we learn that law enforcement mixed up their legers. Mm -hmm. They think that they have someone else named Robert Leger or Raj, Roger Leger who does have a criminal past involving the sale and transportation of drugs. But they're too far in the game to admit that they have the wrong guy. So they just go with it. Yeah. And they knew that they were going to set him up no matter what. So when Stephen McCaddy's character goes to the Thai court, he says, yeah, this guy has like a long criminal record in Canada of, you know, selling, transporting drugs. Throw the book at his ass. So he's sentenced to death. But he remembers there's an exchange Daniel has with Josh Hartnett's character where he says, you have to plead guilty. If you don't, they're going to kill you, execute you. Just plead guilty. He pleads guilty. They give him 100 years. During that time, Josh Hartnett's character, uh, he's trying to release the story unsuccessfully, but a, a media outlet does say we want to run this story. Mm -hmm. And through that story, Daniel's case gets some attention and the Canadian government agrees to investigate. There's a newly established complaints division that decides to take up the story, which I, I think it, it, it does come across, obviously, in the film, but it gets kind of lost in the mix. Yeah. Um, over a course of eight years, so Daniel spends eight years in prison, and he finally wins his case so that he can be <clears throat> transferred back to Canada. So he doesn't have to spend a hundred years in Thailand. The end. Um... The story, it took, it was kind of complicated explaining it, but it's very basic. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't care for this film because I feel like the two biggest components of this story are sort of glossed over. The actual, like, um, entrapment and corruption involving law enforcement is sort of brushed over. Mm -hmm. Like, it's established that, oh, we have the wrong guy, but we have to produce numbers. And... Daniel's character, like, this poor guy's life was ruined, and we really don't get a sense. The eight years he spends in prison is literally flashed in, like, 30 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah. It goes from him getting the letter saying that they, they agree to investigate to him getting the letter saying that he's getting out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, there's nothing in between. And all they do is show him wearing glasses and a little facial hair to show that eight years have passed. Mm -hmm. I feel like that process... And, he's, have, and he's become a Buddhist and... Um, can he's all Zen and... Can speak the local language... <laughs> I feel like that eight-year process is what would have been um, the most intriguing about the story. I agree. Uh, I think, as you, you said, as we're watching it, like the Hartnett um, tangent takes up a lot of space. Oh, and then uh, Josh Hartnett's un acting takes up a lot un of space. And unnecessarily so. It, Jim Gaffigan as well. It's like we spend way too much time with these people who are really should be peripheral. Well, let me go through my notes and you can add to them. So first I write down all the president's men because I think the Josh Hartnett character, like they're trying to make him like some kind of like Watson and Crick type. Like he's really delving in and finding, but it's pretty transparent. Like he, he realizes something happened. He interviews the guy, the he believes Danny, Daniel right away. And you know, it's interesting. We have to spend so much time in how that affects like his wife played by Amanda Crew, and they, they have a newborn, and how, how much that's affecting them. Um, we really don't get that about Daniel Leger at all. No, yeah, we like, understand we... more about Josh Hartnett's character than the actual man whose life was ruined. But again, as far as, like, Josh Hartnett's character and the investigating he's doing, it doesn't seem like, he, I mean, the film doesn't, maybe in reality, but the film doesn't really show him doing, like, a deep dive. He's just floundering about the news office, like, listen to me, I have this story. This is investigation as being loud and aggressive yeah. and, and tenacious. Uh, but uh, what else did I want to... It, it, yes, it's, this is a film that is trying hard to imitate uh, All the President's Men and Midnight Express, in yeah. my mind. Um, 
The music in this film, so the production quality is good. Like some money was spent and they spend some good money on music because we have some Aretha Franklin, we have some Phil Collins, we have some um, New, New Order. Order. Those scenes are related to Daniel using drugs. So one of, there's a character who he, who works at a pawn shop, mm -hmm. who he initially is sent to retrieve drugs from as like a test, we find out. And he's smitten by her instantly. So they go and like party, have sex, and the music corresponds with that. Sure. Those scenes were interesting. I thought they were a little distracting. Like it's trying, it, it, feel, it, fit, it fit with how the film is, how everything felt kind of hokey. Like it's really trying to imitate all these other tropes that we've seen done over and over again, but really is just recycling things and, and not very, and not an interesting I agree, way. but the three songs they play I do like, so that's why I thought it was interesting. <laughs> Um, I, I do too, but it just it it also calls attention to really how little is going on here. Like the new order, like Blue Monday, you know. Look how Blue Monday is using Atomic Blonde, for instance. It, it's a waste. It, it's it's a just waste. a waste. Yeah. Like oh, they're to at pay that money for that song, and it's like okay. And it was shot by the film was shot by Robert Plant, who uh, I'm familiar with as uh, he lends a couple of Philip Fallado films, um, which are you know very uh, contained melodramas really so th it's interesting that he's attached to this gangster project to me is what it's trying to be next i really like jim gaffigan's stand-up comedy and i've liked him in several films even like in troop zero he's kind of corny but he's likable and i don't need him to you know his stand-up is very wholesome family friendly mm -hmm. so it's fun seeing him food like food related yeah and food related it's fun seeing him be more adult he does you know use the expletives in this film so that's not the part that bothers me it's just he is so damn corny in this movie like even, I, I literally wrote down what is Jim Gaffigan doing like I just don't understand um, even in his intro scene where he pulls a, um, holds a gun to Daniel's head it, you've seen that scene before and you know how that's supposed to play and it does not play that way in fact I think the only reason <laughs> there's that scene where he's eating chicken wings talking to the cops and like that's the scene that Probably sold him on that the movie. That sold him on the movie. He felt very... Yeah, him eating the chicken wings, being kind of a dick, he did that very well. Mm -hmm. There's a scene where Jim Gaffigan's running. Oh, yeah. Which was, I thought, very funny. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, when Daniel's in the Thai prison, I wrote down, like, is this what Thai prisoners look like? Because, you know, that might be a fun prison to visit. They're all very attractive men. <laughs> it just seems so unbelievable. Um... I didn't like that because we, you know, this device of sort of us knowing what happens before it happens, like, there's no suspense to the film. No. Mm -hmm. At all. Like, we know this kid's going to get apprehended in Thailand and spend time in prison. So, we know, like, we know how everything's going down before it even happens. We know law enforcement is setting him up. So, all of the scenes where law enforcement, because the two detectives or cops, whatever, whoever they are, they're pretending to be like drug kingpins. Mm -hmm. But we know they're not going to rough up Daniel because they're cops. So there is like zero suspense to me. The scenes where like they grab him and put him in a car and try to like strong arm him. You know it's not going anywhere. So yeah. what's the point? Uh, the, only, the only scene, and this is a 135 minute film, it's over two hours, that where I wasn't kind of taken out at every single second was the uh, reenactment of... The, the drug bust. That, yeah. That's the only scene that felt like, oh, this, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm in it. I wrote that down as the only good scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, adding more characters who we don't care about, I think Stephen McCaddy's, uh, what's his name, McCaffey? McCaddy. Like my sister? Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> hi, Hattie. Um, he, his son, like we bring in his son, like, two-thirds of the way through the film mm -hmm. and then like him dying the the son dying i just felt like why do we need that who cares like sure. that just took up space um the last note i have is in the end when daniel is transported back to canada and we see him like being transported to his new prison digs josh hartnett's character has cameras out there and he's gonna like do a broadcast about it that shit was so corny. Yeah, it, it no, it, really, this it's a hokey film because nothing plays authentically. I thought this film was like, whoever made it, it, it feels very like, I think 
being like an American from California, like the stereotype of Canadians is like they're very nice, very polite. This film felt like a stereotype of what I think Canadians like trying to tell a gritty story. Like it's very were... polite. Even Josh Hartnett being upset. I mean, yeah, he's stomping through every scene. Like no one's listening to me, but he's still not like outraged and like right. yeah. he's just kind of like politely uh, annoyed <laughs> that no one's listening to his story. Um, All the good guys do the right thing. Like, even when Hartnett's wife is compromised or threatened, like, he flies back. He leaves Bangkok to go tend to her when, you know, a, a real selfish prick would be like, I'll see you when I'm done. Hope you're safe. I don't know. I guess if you're a Josh Hartnett fan... Um, oh, so what did I like? Uh, I think the film looks decent. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like it, has, it did remind me of that Daniel Radcliffe film about the two guys in the South African oh, prison. Oh, Escape from Pretoria. Escape from Pretoria. Like... It looks fine, the actors are fine, but the story is just kind of weak and focusing on the wrong thing. Because my big complaint about that film was we spend over an hour watching him make keys when it's like that person's life life's work was to end like apartheid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we focus on him making keys. I feel like this Daniel character who's meant to represent like this real life man whose name is like Alan or I forget the real man's name oh, it's based oh. on. Anyway, this man's life was ruined, and he spent years in prison on some corruption shit, and, like, we really don't get a sense of that at all. He, we, we just see him saying, like, I'm a Buddhist, I'm all yeah, Zen now, yeah. he looks great, like, okay. It, 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 it does feel like the wrong, we've sensationalized the story, or the filmmakers have sensationalized the focusing on the wrong things. Yeah. Do you have anything else? Uh, I haven't seen uh, Antoine Olivier Pilon since uh, Dolan's Mommy, which I, a film I wasn't a fan of. Oh, I did like him. His performance is fine, but he really is limited by the script. Yeah, um, but I would watch something else with him. Um, it also, He's like a little skinhead John Con- Claude Van Damme. Yeah. Which I liked. But... Sure. Uh, I also, the opening... Um, the opening is a bit of a red herring because it's Josh Hartnett speeding. He leaves the, the interview we meet him at and then he speeds off with uh, his photographers following him that's to the right. hospital that's uh, right. because his, his child is being born. And that's how Bad Boys for Life opens. That is how Bad Boys for Life opens. <laughs> Which I thought, because we were watching, like, what did we just watch where this happened? Um, anyway, we could wrap this up. What would you give this film? One out of five. I would give it one and a half out of five. And uh, that extra half is for the Thai prisoners, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.